you, Jesus. There was one that was alone in the crowd. Do you ever feel alone in the crowd? Do you ever feel like you're just hopelessly alone in the crowd? That you don't fit in? That people around you seem to be going on with their lives and having a wonderful time, but you feel isolated. You don't feel like you have you don't have joy. You don't understand why you're the way you are. And it's almost to the point where you think God doesn't hear me. God's not around me. You don't want to believe that because if you believe that, then there is no hope. And so you're to the point where you just say, God, show me. Show me that you're there. Show me that you hear my prayers. Show me, God, that you've heard me. You've seen me alone in the dark places. You've, you've, you've seen me when I was in my struggle. You've seen me when I didn't want to pray to you. I didn't want to read my Bible because I was so frustrated with it. You've seen me when I was wondering if there's other ways that I could just find happiness in this life because I'm just so miserable. Show me, God. You're looking at it. You're looking at God's answer through this video because God is speaking to you and saying, I have seen you. I have heard you. I know your struggle. I know your trial. I know the persecution. He knows it all. And just as he come to Zacchaeus through the crowd, he's come to you through social media, through Facebook. He's come to you. And he says, today is your day. Today is the day I abide with you. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. And basically what that breaks down to is he was one of the most hated people in that community by the Jews because Rome took their taxes, took, that's where they, they were taxed. And so here he is, a traitor in their eyes because he was a Jew, and he was collecting money for Rome, for the taxes. And the Pharisees had passed laws where he could not even go in the temple. He was ostracized. He had no way of communion, not only with his friends, but with God. So he was completely alone. He was completely isolated by his occupation. He was labeled, and he was limited. Jesus passed through all the people in that place to come straight up to that tree and say, I see you. I come to you today. I can't tell you how much you're loved by God and make it make it as powerful as it is. I really can't. I don't have the, the, the language, but we don't have the understanding fully of God's love. But I can tell you this. You have never been loved more then God loves you. And you will never be loved any less than God loves you. God, God does not change his love. He doesn't decide, I'm going to unfriend you, or I'm, I'm going to stop loving you. He doesn't decide that somehow, some way, you've just done so much, he just can't get over it. The love that God has for you is so great that when you hurt God or when you sin against God or when you fall short of the glory of God, and we all do, the love of God is so great that God doesn't get mad and hate you. God's hurt for you. God's heart is hurt. God has feelings. He's not some being that doesn't have emotions and have feelings. He is a real being that has feelings. Go through the Word of God. God can be jealous. God can be angry. God loves. The Bible says God is love. He looks at you with a compassion and a desire to be close to you and to be loved by you. And he wants to love us. We limit him. We label him sometimes. We talk about labeling and limiting us or other. Sometimes we limit God. We say, well, God can't love like that. God can't love somebody like me. Or we label God and say, you know, God's a Baptist. Don't we all know that? Don't I found out a lot of people think God's a Baptist. God's a Pentecostal. Or God's a Methodist. No, God must be Catholic. We label God. No, God is just simply who he says he is. He is the I am. He is the sovereign ruler of the universe. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. When everybody walks out on you and everybody turns and you feel like you're the last person on this planet, God sits right beside you. And he
he has sent me here this morning to do this inspirational devotion to tell you today that he has seen your cries, he has heard your cries. Every tear you've shed, he has caught. Every tear has been seen by God. Sometimes we go through struggles and tribulations and trials because we put ourselves in positions that God has to get our attention. Sometimes we go through it because God's building our faith. And then sometimes we go through it, y'all, because life is hard. And Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome this world. Zacchaeus had no right to God, according to the Pharisees and according to the people in that region. He had no right to God. They wouldn't even let him in the temple. He couldn't even go to the church. He had no, who would? And when they saw, when they saw Jesus turn to Zacchaeus and say, hey, I'm going to your house today, they flipped out because they had nothing to do with that man. When you're labeled and people think a certain way about you, they don't want other people to like you. They don't want other people to have anything to do with you. And that's what rubs religious people so bad, really legalistic religious people, because God is not a legalist. He's not a religionist. God is love. God is pure. God is holy. God is everything that we, that we are not. God is perfect and he loves you today and he loves you with an everlasting love I pray this helps you today and, and inspires you to understand that no matter what you face or where we go God will not change he says he's the same today yesterday and forevermore he, the, the Bible says all good gifts come from the father of lights and whose there's no variableness nor shadow of turning God doesn't change his mind about you I thank him for that. The Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's in Romans 8. The Bible says he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's a good God. And he's a loving God. Zacchaeus was saved. Because when he come down that tree, he answered God. He answered the call of Christ. That's the same call that we all have from Christ. Come to me. Come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. God is near you today. He's come near you this morning through this video because he wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know that he sees you. He hears your cries. And when other people label and limit what God can do in your life, he goes and shows them and you that labels and limits do not apply to him and do not apply to you. Because you are who God says you are. You're not who some man says you are. You're not what people say you are. Don't you ever forget that. Don't you ever forget that you are not what people say you are. That they don't control you. They don't make you who you are. They don't have the power to call you into doing something for God. God calls and equips. God's the one that does what he wants to do in your life. He'll use a man, he'll use a woman sometimes to get a message to you or, or to, 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 let, to confirm what he's trying to do in your life, but make no mistake about it. There's not a man on this planet or a woman on this planet that has the authority to tell you who you are and what you are in Christ. That is the Holy Spirit's job. He does his job very well, perfectly. He knows your hearts. He knows everything about you. He knows the numbers of hairs on your head. He knows your thoughts. He knows what you think in the morning. He knows what's on your mind at night. He knows you intimately and loves you in spite of it. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about me. When God saw Zacchaeus in that tree through that multitude of crowd of people, the dust moving, people walking in that, that dusty region, and he saw the dust, and he looked up, and he saw a tree, and I can imagine him seeing a guy perched up in the tree. He didn't say, wow, I wonder who, I got to go over there and find out who that guy is. No, that's why he came through that way. Because he was going to Zacchaeus. Why? Because he saw his heart. He knew that all these other people wanted to see him, wanted to be around him. But there was one that had no hope and had no way. He said, I'll make a way. They won't let him in the church. They won't have anything to do with him. I'm going to his house. That's the God we serve. That's the picture of Jesus Christ that I want you to get this morning. He'll, he'll go over it, whatever it takes. He'll break down whatever wall it is to show himself strong on those whose hearts are toward him. 
God looks at the heart this morning. You pray today that your heart is toward God. You ask God to forgive you of the sin in your life. You ask God to forgive you for the prejudice in your life or for the things you've said about others, for the times you've labeled others or limited others. And say, Lord, I'm sorry that I've labeled you. I'm sorry that I've limited you. I got to share this. I weren't going to say this, but I got to. Beverly's probably over there going, oh, don't do it, but I've got to share this. Because this is a prejudice in my life, and it's a prejudice probably in some of your lives. Some of y'all are going to probably say, well, he's, he's gone off the reservation. I'm done. Be done. I'm just going to be real. I am a martial artist. That's what I do. That's my hobby. Some people fish. Somebody do woodwork. Some people, I'm a martial artist. I just love it. It's my happy place. It's a peaceful place for me to go in my dojo. I call it my dojo. I got my stuff set up in there. One day I'll do a video in there and show you. I love it. But I've been going through a struggle. We all go through struggles. This ain't a pity party. This ain't a, a David pity party. I'm just being straight up. We all go through struggles. There's times when I feel like I don't have a friend in the world. I'll be honest. There's times when I feel like I'm alone. I walk in my dojo. I was out here doing some uh, meditation and Tai Chi. Now, yeah, I do Tai Chi for all you people that say, oh, that's, it, look, it's not evil. What's in your heart? What's in your mind? It's not, for me, it's not Buddha. It's not Confucius. It's not Taoism. It is Jesus Christ. He's the source. Martial arts teaches everything goes back to the source. Balance, harmony, mind, body, and spirit. Mine is Jesus Christ. He is my God. He is the being in my life. He's that spiritual guide in my life. He's my friend. He's my brother. He's my master. He's everything. He's my family. He is everything. I walk in that dojo. I don't know how your phone works, but when I'm watching a YouTube video, if I turn it off or quick turn my screen off, it stops. My YouTube video stops. Well, I turned, I was watching, looking at something and I turned it off and it started playing. And it started playing this guy who was giving advice on being unshakable, on how to overcome emotions, how to overcome uh, fear and things that come in your life that seem sometimes to overwhelm you to the point where you realize that you're not what you obtain in life. You're not, you're not this materialistic stuff that you grab hold of. You're not even your feelings. Those are things that come to you, and those are things that you have to process. And to overcome these things, you have to realize who you are. Who you are. For me, it's who am I in Christ? Who am I? And I could go in a lot more detail because this was just an incredible, incredible video that was playing but I couldn't get it to stop I literally had my phone and I kept and there, there was nothing on my screen I didn't even know what it was playing I didn't know who it was and this is where the prejudice is going to come in this is when some of y'all are going to go oh my god and this is where I kind of wigged out the guy at the end said I'm a Shaolin master which I know what that means some of y'all may have a clue I know what that means and I know what he believes and it's, he's not a Christian and his views are different. But through that, when he was given that speech, there was something very powerful that spoke to me through that. And when he said he was a Shaolin master, the first thing I said was, oh boy, I got to be careful. The Bible says try the spirits. I don't want to be misled. I don't want to get off on a tangent. Look, we got some people in this country that are, have some of the biggest churches and the biggest ministries, and they are crazy off the charts, gone out of God's will. And they have the biggest churches and they have huge ministries because they're feeding people lies and they're telling people what they want to hear. There's no gospel. There's, it, it's just motivation. And I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be popular if I'm going to lose my soul. I don't want to be known if I mislead you to hell in, in the process of that. I, I want to be true to God. I want to be his man. I want to be. I want to honor God. But this man was speaking something that spoke into my life, and God used that to help me. Now, what he was saying was directly what was going on with me. I said all that to say this: there's prejudice that we have as a body of Christ, to where we think we've labeled God, we 
you've limited him. He can't do this. He can't speak. He can't use that person. God used a donkey one time in the Bible. Deal with that. God used a jackass. I wanted to share that with you this morning because I feel that because we try to put him in a box and we, we I'm trying to say this without churches, denominations, ministries sometimes are so dogmatic and so afraid that something they can't explain something that God's doing or something that's happening that they don't they don't want anything to do and they say that's not of God. Well, it's not of God to them because they don't understand because they just they've labeled him and limited him. It's a prejudice toward God. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, it's not of God. I can say that, and you, you can believe that. God does not go against his word. God's not a liar. But there's some things that you just can't explain. And there's some things that I can't explain. And there's some things that God just has not told us. He didn't tell us why he let Satan come into the Garden of Eden when it was perfect. Why did he let the devil go in the Garden of Eden? Can you answer that? Is it in the Bible? He didn't tell us why. He didn't tell us why he created the devil in the first place. And he was an angel. Didn't God know that Satan would fall? Didn't God know when he created him that he would turn on him? He's God. He knows everything. I can't explain this stuff. Look, I'm telling you stuff that my kids sometimes ask me. I like, it's like, what the heck? I can't explain that. But it's like Billy Graham said. He can't explain it all. He can't understand it all. But by faith, he just believes it. And that's what God is looking for you and you today. Don't worry about the limitations and the labels that people put on you. Don't you limit and label God. Don't you limit and label other people. You just by faith believe the word of God and stand on the truth of his word and have an open heart to what he's trying to tell you and do in your life. And I promise you, I promise you that God will show himself on your behalf and will make things plain to you. I got to go. Be blessed today. I want to say this before we get off here because I know that all hell's going to fight me. The devil's going to fight me when I say this, but I'm going to say it. I made a commitment last night in prayer right down there in the woods to start doing morning devotions again. The reason I quit doing morning devotions is because I complained and said, I got to go to work. I got to get going. I, blah, blah, blah. You know, the truth is I find myself here drinking coffee and hadn't even gone to work and I could have already done a devotion. The truth is Spiritually, it got to be a lot. Spiritually, it got, you know why it got to be a lot? Because I was trying to do it in my own strength, trying to come up with something every morning. Well, I got to come up with something this morning. No, I don't need to come up with nothing. What I need to do is be obedient to God. There are going to be mornings when I step out here and I don't have a clue. I'm just going to open the Bible and read. It doesn't matter what I have to say. What does God have to say? If I'm obedient, what was I doing? I was labeling, limiting God. Limiting God. My job is to go down in them woods and pray at night. I don't care how tired I am. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care if it's lightning. I'm going to go to them woods and pray. Sometimes I'll sit in my truck. Sometimes I'll be out there in the woods shouting and hollering and praying. But I'm going to go pray. And tonight I'm not going to feel like it. Tonight the devil's going to make me feel like I need to go to bed. I'm going to be so sleepy I'm not going to feel like it. And like last night my wife's going to say, you need to go pray. And I'm going to be like, you need to go pray yourself. You don't need to get mad at me for telling you to go pray. I want to go to bed. I'm tired. You need to go pray. And you know what I found out? I went and prayed. Sleepy tired. But my little boy, Will, who's 12, he says, Daddy, can I go pray with you? I said, I'm not in the mood to pray. And here's my little boy wanting to go pray with me. And I don't, I'm limiting. I'm, I'm labeling myself. I'm not spiritual. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I, didn't, I wanted to go take a chair and go to bed. But my little boy wants to go pray with me in the woods, in the woods. So we go down there. He says, I'm just going to sit in the truck. I said, no, I'm going to sit with you and we're going to pray in the truck. 
And I want you to know I felt like I fought hell trying to pray. The devil didn't want me to pray, especially for my little boy. But I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed until I prayed through, and I prayed until I felt like I prayed. And I looked at him, and I said, you want to pray? He says, you've already prayed a paragraph. I think that's enough. I said, okay. Last night, laying in the bed, I thought about that. My little 12-year-old son, who's almost grown up to be a man, got to go down in the woods with me, and hear his daddy pray. What more could I ask for from God? What more? Every morning, Monday through Friday, Lord willing, I'm not some extremely extraordinary circumstance. I will be on here around 8.30 to do a morning devotion. I may be on here at night during the week some. I'm thinking about starting to do some more of that. Nathan will be back. We'll be doing some nighttime things on Fridays or Saturday night. But every Sunday morning, Lord willing, I'll be right back on here again. I say that to say this. It's a struggle in this life, no matter who you are, where you live. But we're in a real spiritual battle in our country. We really are. And we forget sometimes that there is a real adversary out there and he has, he's very organized. And we look at other people sometimes and we say they're doing more than me or they're greater than I am or they, they can do, God would do so much more with that person. But you know what? You look at Zacchaeus. Nobody liked him. Nobody respected him. They hated him. But God says, I'm going to spend my time with him today. God doesn't have favorites. We're all favorites, every one of us. And what he's called me to do through this platform, whether it's a small thing in people's eyes or there's a big thing in people's eyes, is completely irrelevant. What matters is that I honor God and that I'm obeying him. Because somewhere, some way, whether you're in Arizona, Tennessee, Texas, North Carolina, somebody's going to see this video that's been struggling and feeling alone and hopeless. And they're going to say, God has spoke to me. Not because I'm anything, because I'm not. But because I simply hit the go button on this phone and God used a vessel that was willing. And he'll use us today, y'all, if we're willing. Let the words of our mouths the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in His sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name. Please share this video and have a blessed day.